Tourism is an important industry for a large number of countries, in particular less economically developed ones. Why do tourists want to travel? Often it's about exploration and discovery, adventure, the yearning to discover places of natural and cultural significance or great beauty, the desire to encounter a new way of life. The irony is that often it is these precious values which become threatened when an area opens up to tourism. We're going to have a look at a case study today of Goa in India and see how tourism has changed and shaped that area for the good and for the bad. As for the number of visitors, until 1986, tourism was quite limited here. The type of people who frequented Goa were hippies and backpackers like these fellows here, a very wealthy tourist from overseas and Indian tourists. The annual total reached about, uh, 500,000, about half of those from overseas. They would stay in family homes and locally run hostels, not very luxurious, but which gave visitors a more cultural experience. And because they were all locally run, their money would be injected into the local economy. Since 1986, there's been a huge boom in tourism in Goa, principally with the arrival of package holidays. There was a demand for a new sort of accommodation, three- and four-star hotels with pools and gardens. Tourism spread from the small fishing villages and started to sprawl along the coastline. Since 1987, the region started to see action groups protesting against the growth of tourism. There were protests at the airport people with banners saying, tourists go home, and throwing cow dung. These had little effect. The growth of tourism continued. Communication routes improved. Airports, railways, roads, and these opened up areas to the north and south, invading further into the natural environment. Large multinational chain hotels opened up, and these, of course, take money out of the country rather than giving it to local people. Obviously, some money reaches the local people. There are more jobs available in the big hotels, reducing unemployment and raising wages and standards of living. And then local people open up small businesses of their own. Shops, bars, restaurants, boutiques, construction businesses, and so on. But at the same time, a lot of the profit just disappears, especially as more and more of these hotels offer all-inclusive package deals that include accommodation, full board, excursions, transportation, spas, the lot. The tourists need never leave their resorts. The traditional industries of fishing and agriculture fell into decline. There was large-scale deforestation and valuable farmland was lost too. Some locals claim they have been forced off their land. Obviously, where the natural environment has been built up, this means there are huge pressures on natural resources. Mangrove swamps are removed and replaced by hotels. Do you know what mangroves are? They are trees with long, twisting roots that grow in the salty coastal waters partly underwater. These mangrove swamps are really important for reducing coastal flooding, so their removal is really damaging. The disposal of rubbish and sewage is also an issue, and much of it is dumped at sea, destroying the marine ecosystem. There is also a loss of traditional values, as young Indians are influenced by Western ways. Festivals become westernized, tourist shows, losing their cultural significance. Goa in particular has become a center for drugs, prostitution, and nudity. Crime is also on the increase, where tourists are threatened, assaulted and robbed by members of the local population. So, as you can see, there is no stopping the inevitable tide of tourism that is sweeping through more and more corners of the world. And although there are a number of advantages to tourism, you can clearly see that there are severe negative implications too. Tourism is an important industry.